Hi folks, welcome back. So in last week's GPT-5 release, they introduced a couple of new concepts in the API. And I feel like I haven't seen much coverage of these two new features. The ones I'm talking about are freeform function calling and context-free grammars for those function calls. And these are both a pretty big departure from the way we have been doing tool calling up until now. So the current tool calling mechanics are very much like calling a function, like a function in a programming language, where you select which function you want to call and then you populate the arguments to that function. The classic hello world example is a get weather function. So based on your chain of thought task breakdown, you might figure out you need to get the weather in say San Francisco. So you call get weather and then you also have to figure out, oh, this is in San Francisco. So I have to populate San Francisco as the input to that function and so on. But what OpenAI are proposing here is something much more freeform. So the payload of the tool call need not just be a function call. It can be any freeform text. And I want to play the part of the live stream where they talk about this. But I don't think they quite did justice to the deeper implications or the things you can build with these two new techniques. And that's what I want to get into in this video. But this is where they talk about it for barely just a minute. I think they completely buried this. Uh, but sometimes, you know, developers are pushing our models to their limits, and they have extremely long arguments for tool calls. And it can be more challenging for the models to escape, you know, valid, control characters out of 100 lines of code in JSON. And that's why custom tools are just freeform, plain text. And what's super cool is that we're releasing an extension to structured outputs where you can supply a regular expression or even a context-free grammar and constrain the model's outputs to that. And this will be super useful if you want to supply like a custom DSL, if you have your own SQL fork, and specify that the model always follow that format. All right, so that is pretty huge, I feel like, because back in the day, we all remember what a pain it was to get these LLMs to emit valid JSON, and they would get tripped up if the payload inside the JSON had a lot of special characters that needed to be escaped and so on. And the latest models have mostly solved that. They have these dedicated JSON modes for output. But the problem is more general. What if you want to output something that conforms to a different grammar and you don't quite have a way to ensure that that grammar is respected? And that's what they're going for with this feature. So they have an example in their cookbook over here, which is, say you have a tool that is calling a SQL database. But then you have, you might have two dialects of SQL. You might have a Microsoft SQL and a Postgres SQL dialect. And they have some subtle differences. For example, the Microsoft SQL dialect has this top keyword, which Postgres does not have. Now, in the past, you would just have to do a lot of intricate prompting to get the model to emit SQL in one dialect versus the other. But now you can just give it a SQL grammar for one of these two dialects. So they have a context-free grammar. They're using Lark, which is a Python library for parsing context-free grammars. And here you have the Postgres dialect of SQL. And this is the important part. When they specify the tool set, to the model, notice it's of type custom. You describe your tool 
I found it a little bit amusing that they still need to include this sentence. You must reason heavily about the query and make sure it obeys the grammar. But this is the new part where they say that the payload to this tool call is of is of a lark grammar and they give it the string that contains that grammar. So what the OpenAI speaker alluded to in passing was that this really opens up a whole new way of approaching problems because if you remember the old Lisp and Scheme philosophy, this is what Abelson and Sussman were trying to teach in SIGP structure and interpretation of computer programs. The problem solving methodology is that before you even try to write programs to solve your problem, what you do first is create a language, a domain specific language to express your entire domain. And if you do that properly and neatly enough, you find that the problem instances in your domain become much easier to express and solve. That's basically the Lisp philosophy. You first design a language for your domain. And now you can do that. And it brings a lot of determinism in that you can have an old fashioned compiler or interpreter, a simple one, for a very domain specific language. And then ask the LLM to go from Natlang to that DSL. And this really does open up a whole new set of use cases or a whole new way of designing these LLM systems that are still prompted by a natural language, but have a much more deterministic way of expressing and solving problems on the back end. So let me give a quick example. So Lark is, like I said, a Python library for context-free grammars. I was playing around with this very simple expression language. This is like a toy expression language that everyone builds when they do a compiler's CS class. So you have variables that are assigned values, and then you can compute expressions that use those variables. This is the Lark grammar for an expression language like this. And this parser ID that Lark has is pretty neat because you can test your grammar in real time. So that is a broken expression. But if I have a valid expression, it updates in real time. There you go. You see the 44 over here. So let me show you the code for this. All right, so here is a Python program that uses Lark and the new OpenAI API. This is, that is an old grammar. Okay, this is the grammar for the expression language. And then I have some code that uses Lark to parse it and actually evaluate it. So all that is fairly boilerplate Lark grammar parsing code. But here is the model part, the GPT-5 part. So here's my basic prompt. This, this is the problem statement essentially from the user. And I'm telling the model to convert the user's arithmetic problem into an expression with variables. I'm telling it which tool to use. And this is the problem, very simple, just for illustration. Alice is five years old, Bob is four years older than Alice. How old is Bob? And then this is how I'm invoking the model. This is directly taken out of the OpenAI cookbook. I tell it that I have a custom tool. That's what it's called, and that's the description. Evaluates simple arithmetic 
expressions with variable bindings and then i tell it what grammar the tool called payload should conform to and i am taking that output which is in this grammar and then i'm passing it to the lark evaluator to evaluate and print out the final value so if i run this so it's calling the model this is just output from my test expression this is not output from the model but here's the output from the model so it does the right thing with my grammar so let alice equals five bob is alice plus four and bob because the the last expression is the value of the entire entire program and the result is nine and one of the nice things lark does is give you an environment which is the values of all these variables so i know this was kind of a toy example but i think the underlying mechanism is really powerful this idea of now reliably being able to get output from an LLM that conforms to a grammar really does unlock a lot of interesting use cases. And it goes way beyond JSON or SQL or existing programming languages. Now, there are a few caveats because this initial version doesn't take very complex grammars they have a ton of disclaimers in their documentation so if you have some very very intricate dsl with a very complex grammar that might not work maybe it'll work in the future but you still can now design these systems with a dsl in mind and that is really really interesting yeah, I thought that really got buried in all the GPT-5 analysis. So I'm going to be playing around with this a bit more and I'll report back. But yeah, if you have a DSL in mind, you can now have GPT-5 output to that DSL from natural language input. All right, thanks.